I think the plan was to pick up on the future land use element review. Um, we haven't introduced any new information or new materials. <coughs> I think with the exception of we do have, we can pass these down, updated. Pass okay. most of them around. Just yeah, the uh, that place-based area map. We just updated that with roads on it, so you can identify <laughs> where some of those boundaries are and things maybe. So I believe we left off. If you're looking at the old, or if you're looking at the strike through underline uh, set of from June 9th, for June 14th, we were on the policy 5.5.2, the old policy 5.5.2. Um, I and mean, if you recall, we were just working our way through questions. A lot of this stuff on the mixed use is uh, a lot of it's proposed to be removed because it was a lot of design criteria that's better addressed in our land development codes. So I'll stop there and y'all can pick up as what, you like. What number are we at? 5.2.2. 5 5 okay. On the old, on the, what, under the column, it says current language. That's kind of where we left off. Okay, next you said I should be better than the pen. If I may, just so that I'm at the right place, 5.2.2 mm -hmm. .2 mixed use centers? Correct, sir. Okay. Right. That becomes 5.2.1, I mean uh, uh, right? 2.5.1, right. It gets num renumbered yeah. and yeah. moved mm -hmm. under. Objective 2.5. Well, 2.5.1 looks I, like a relatively I, minor it's, change. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a de minimis. Uh, yeah. What a, what a stunningly consistent segue. Mixed use centers. <laughs> I did, uh, for the record, I did call staff today and I just needed some clarification that I didn't think needed to be brought up at the meeting because it would get us off on the side, but it had to do with mixed use centers. Miss Vincent, would this be an appropriate section for me to bring up my concerns about uh, that triggers for mixed use centers to meet stormwaters, or would that be addressed in a at a better location? Um, this section is really about urban design criteria and mixing of uses versus I think what you're, but. I mean, it, it's as, probably as as good a place as any. I mean, certainly with that particular development, we were trying to implement a, a mixed-use center on that property. Um, that was the origins of it. So, well, oh, but this is more of a definition and not a criteria, isn't it? I mean, if you if you refer to a mixed use and, and be complying with other parts that that talk about. You know, drainage and you so might that. be spot on, and that's my point. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I wasn't actually referring to Mara's Miss Oh Allie got a different conversation about oh. redevelopment for existing properties that are non conforming that what triggers might bring them into conforming and those would be mixed use centers. I think if you wanted to apply it to mixed use centers, yes. I think you were talking about just in general non conforming properties, and I think he was also looking out on the storm. You might want to pull that water. microphone like over your way just so it might pick up. Just for, just for a reminder, they did say to make sure we all speak directly into the microphone and that we don't move them so that they're that they can pick us up appropriately. Okay, okay. I'll stand up. <laughs> um, we were discussing kind of what. For properties that are non-conforming now, in terms of maybe landscaping, stormwater requirements, X, Y, Z of codes, what then makes them come into compliance when something new goes into place? Um, for example, at the Manatee Village Shopping Center, that's something that just had some facade improvements, but it didn't trigger any sort of site improvements to come up to compliance with current codes. So I think Mr. Vesey was looking at, is there a way to put something in there to talk about triggers for redevelopment of properties of when they need to come into compliance. And since we talked, I was kind of thinking, I didn't know for comp plan purposes if maybe the best method is to put a policy that talks about evaluate options yes. for redevelopment of properties to come into, or non-conforming properties to come into compliance. And then the actual code can then go into our land development code, but at least gives the policy base for us to make that correction in the future. So that was 
That's as far as I got from mm -hmm. this afternoon. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty far. So you're correct in the definition part. And so does that mean that this <clears throat> is the right location or not the right location? I definitely think it, it, it warrants going in the future land use element. I think right. I'd have to look at... I think we can make a note to come up with the policy and then I can look at all of our objectives and once we get through everything and see where it best, where it fits. best fits. That sounds yeah. wonderful. Thank you very much. So it would be like a general policy of evaluate, you know, land development codes and regulations to, you know, clarify or, you know, strengthen requirements for retrofitting of non-conforming site, site, construction type of things we can come up with something well, that mm -hmm. moving things toward compliance and and we need to add that to our list then when we have a a workshop to deal with the code again and, it, and it, that, that'll be yes you know so yeah that would be one of the things that will get into the lit, right, list of that, land development code amendments that need to be as part of the overall package when we're once we d get done with the land use, the, the comp plan, then we move in directly into the land development code updates. Yeah, because it's, it's unfortunate they've spent that much money on that project and not improved anything as far as the site. But can, I, can I go off on a little bit off repeat? center on that yeah. as mm -hmm. possible? You know, one of the things that, and this goes back to sustainability, and I know this is the wrong time to mention it, uh, mention it but... One of the things that we don't do well, and we haven't done well, the state of Florida hasn't done well, is designating, except for little baby islands in a parking lot, that I'd rather lose parking spaces and have more green space in some of these mm -hmm. big box or, or large parking mm -hmm. lot uh, uh, locations that make that a requirement as part of any, um, you know, uh, permitting, you well, know. You know, I, I can say Publix would, you know, take about 20 spaces so, out of the Publix parking lot because you can afford to lose 20 spaces and plant trees. Mm -hmm. and well, the, the, the post-COVID world reality yeah. is that a lot less people go shopping, so those big parking lots don't need to be as big as they are anymore. So, so but, somewhere in our materials, I don't know, I, I don't have it in front of me, but we have a, there's a... We have an exhibit that is an urban heat islands map for the city. Yep. So to your point, you know, I would much rather, I would like to build, you know, policy and regulations around reducing those urban heat islands and they're, you can pick them out easily. So if there's a yep. project that's being developed and it's in an urban heat island, then the emphasis will be on tree plantings not parking and you would be in you know you would be able to reduce parking or or dictate that it has to happen yeah we don't i'm sorry we we don't have the city of tarpet springs really doesn't have that much space to where you would see that type of parking a lot except on that 19 corridor at this point the, yeah okay so and i know i'm going off off of this but i don't care um there's got to be some incentives the city can implement to go to Walmart or pub people on the public shopping plaza and say, look, if you do this, this is what we're going to do for you. Mm -hmm. Because those are existing issues. They're, exist they're existing heat, mm -hmm. like you said, heat mm -hmm. zones. Um, and we don't have anything in place, or, or is that something that's being so, contemplated by the sustainability so committee? You, so, you, again, you may, you may want to put a policy in that um, that is kind of directional in that, you know, explore incentives to, you know, or, you know, evaluate incentives to, you know, increasing tree planting, you know, tree plantings through city participation with private development, some pri private partner or something like that. Um, Grant, yeah, you know, know, I mean, we, you know, we do have the tree bank and we have money in those that we collected, you know, is there a way to, you know, parlay that into some sort of a, you know, a tree planting program on private properties, you know, for places like that, again, having, having it being maybe tied specifically, you know, to larger policies of reducing urban heat islands and things like that. So I think you can be directional in, you know, with policy statements that that's the direction you'd like to like us to go in. I'd love to see the city take a, a bold step and do something like that mm -hmm. and let everybody follow suit. Yeah. 
And it's okay. and I I know I'm off of this, but that's that's just been bugging me for a while. Well, and for for the money that they've spent on a project like that one, for example, you know, it's it's a drop in the bucket. It doesn't mean anything okay. to them as and far fix, as look the at the PR cost of doing it. Yeah, look at the PR and and the they certainly don't need the amount of parking no. that is with that no. center. So. All right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I think those were all great thoughts, and maybe why we're here. Well, and I hope, I hope somebody, because I'm not organized enough to do it, is keeping track of these things <laughs> to, to, to speak are. about it at a Commissioners, if you're listening. Yeah. So, so if I may, I think the concept of heat islands, so rather than being selective about particular developments or just labeling one, just the concept of heat islands, because that creates a, uh, a side objective piece of data that says, hey, if you fit into the heat island criteria, then therefore, these are the triggers. It moves you to the side of yes. what we may address that keeps you from allowing a property that obviously is not containing their own stormwater to contain their stormwater, which is a life safety issue, and reducing our overall heat. So I like that heat island mm -hmm. concept that you just brought up that puts teeth into something that really makes sense to everyone other than I just don't like all your blacktop. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. No, not a problem. Yeah, an in incentive could be something as simple as a reduction in the parking space requirements or that, just something that's kind of so an uh, even trade-off. Yeah, oddly enough, you know, you almost have to force them to reduce parking rather than incentivizing them to reduce mm. parking. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, for, for developers, especially on the retail side, they want as much parking as they can get. So it is something that I think would almost have to be mandated that if you're in like an urban heat island area, then mm. maybe, you know, this is your, requir your required parking must be reduced by X amount of percentage and replaced with, um, you know, tree islands and, you know, however we structure right, that. Yeah, so, percentage yeah. Yeah. thereof. And a lot of times I've seen the triggers been like 50% of the site or 50% of the building being, you know, remodeled, redeveloped, revitalized, or whatever, whatever threshold you feel is They define that by a caliper, the size of a tree as well. Our, our code specifies a minimum caliper tree for, for planting. Hey. So, you know, maybe it's a more mature tree. Okay, I'm sorry to digress. Again. Okay, so we're at 5.2.3 on the uh, markup version of the future land use element goals, objectives, and policies. And it looks like 5.2.3 changed to 5. Or 2.5.2, .2, uh, but in terms of the verbiage, it's basically the same. And then uh, a lot so of the f the rest of the stuff of this section is is proposed to be deleted because it's a lot of very specific design criteria for you know building facades and it, it's very you know design oriented and it was put in place prior to the smart code being adopted, which has a lot of basically the same things in it. It was kind of a precursor to that. So that's why you know, we feel like it's misplaced at this point. A lot of these policies under mixed use, you've actually got deleted. We do. Okay. Is there uh, is there any significant deletions? I don't. I I know we probably want to go through each one, but is there any significant deletions that we need to be aware of? There's a lot because. <clears throat> I'm kind of looking at your density ones. I'm mm -hmm. curious, are you just, those, are you moving to a different section or how are you addressing some of those? Because um, there's there's a little graph in, mm -hmm. in the next section down. 
Those are they're specifically covered in the, the future land use categories themselves. Okay, got it. Okay. Ma'am, sorry. Would it be possible if Allie could put? I noticed when I was rewatching the meetings, it's hard to follow what we're doing because we're looking at the map, but nobody else can like kind of see. Can we just like as we're talking about each one? Can we have it up on there so we? The actual future like the strike through the strike through underline. I'll see what we can pull up. And because it's, it's, at, it's not at as easy like as you would think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just like. It's hard I to. Be a um, little delayed because it's very tiny from back here, but I'll get it as big as I can. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Not page Since 14. there are, are so many that are similar on strike through, if I may draw attention to policy 5.2.12, which is <clears> the <throat> bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. Mixed use center shall, and then the proposed language, mixed use shall comply with the requirements of the city's multimodal transportation district. Help me understand what our multimodal transportation district is and how it impacts this. So the multimodal transportation district is, and I don't know if we've got a handy map for it or not, um, that was adopted uh, back in 2008-9 time frame. <coughs> that's, and we, we'll see if we can find the map for you. And it was originally, it was adopted in order to get us to there it is, yeah, the Multimodal Transportation District. So it was, that encompasses and actually expands beyond these, the, the smart code area and the, the sponge docks. But it incorporates all of that. And at that point in time, when we were trying to find a way to encourage mixed use and redevelopment um, at a scale that would, you know, did two things, would complement the, the area but would also provide a little bit of incentive for redevelopment the we still had strict transportation concurrency in place and so alt 19 was a failing level of service so basically you were real ham you were hamstrung in order to be able to do anything um, from a redevelopment standpoint so the city went through and under the state statute at that point in time one of the ways to deal with transportation concurrency was to adopt a multimodal transportation district that looked not just at vehicle level of service but bike and pedestrian and transit level of service in a defined area so the better your street grid the better your sidewalks the better your bike and pedestrian you know connections you you, you come up with a you know it's kind of a score on a on a for the multimodal district. So the state acknowledged the multimodal transportation district and what that did was it, you know, it very much, you know, has to operate as a it's a it's recognized as a mixed use area with multiple, you know, and so you're really capitalizing on being able to walk to destinations and less vehicle trips. So it established level of service requirements for both bike and pedestrian. So there was a list of projects that were identified that needed to be um, they're targeted to be completed, like broken sidewalk segments or where the work sidewalk segments and things. So it was meant to be a way that, you, so through increasing, you know, an incremental increase in density and intensity, which is what the smart code essentially was. Oh, you know, for a developer to take advantage of that, they had to they had to do certain improvements and and things. Now, that was working well until probably 2014 time frame and we would basically you know, there's a lot of tech you know, if you read the whole multimodal transportation district document you'll see everything in there but basically it came up with another impact fee if you will a multimodal fee that a developer could pay in lieu it was in addition to the countywide transportation impact fee or they could do a project if there was a sidewalk segment that was identified they could do that so it was a way to kind of get from a to b and address concurrency Coming forward full force forward to today, 
transportation current concurrency is is pretty much gone. We have the countywide, you know, ordinance that basically says that, you know, it's almost kind of a pay and go type of situation. So the the multimodal transportation district is still there. It's not functioning from a from the standpoint of getting projects done in terms of completing a sidewalk segment or still collecting those those funds. It doesn't function in that way, but it is still very much a the basis of mixed use, you know, development patterns. So you're capitalizing on livable, walkable communities and things of that nature. Caroline, have I hit everything? <laughs> And we, subsequent. yeah, and we are that that's been on our list to we want to update it, to bring it up to modern you know modern times here. I mean we we went so far as back in I want to say 2010 11 time frame we actually took this to the board of commissioners and tried to get them to formally adopt the the fees and everything and they they. They opted not to at that point in time, and they basically directed us to just kind of negotiate with the developers as they came in to either get a pay in lieu or get a project, but it was never formally adopted other than being adopted into the comp plan, but the, but the, the, the formal, you know, operations of it kind of ceased around, you know, like I said, 2013-14 time frame. Um, so we want to update it and reintroduce it and make it work so so that makes perfect sense that was a great answer thank you very much you've given me several good answers today <laughs> i'm Son having a, a good gun. day yeah <laughs> it, it'll end tomorrow right <laughs> it will <laughs> so i got a follow-up question and not to get too deep and that would perhaps explain why today if we looked at that MT, MMTD district and the central artery of that is not the Pinellas Trail. No, Pinellas Avenue. Oh, it's Pinellas Avenue. It's got the yep. trail right there. Mm -hmm. So Pinellas, Pinellas Avenue is to the left, so it's mm -hmm. outside that. Of course, the trail goes right there. Yep. There is not continuous sidewalk on either side of the street from Klosterman. Oh, it's, it's farther south. Sense. So you can't physically walk from here mm -hmm. to here. It's a hopscotch. It's bizarre. There's broken pieces. It's off to the side. There's some sidewalk. There's no sidewalk. But that doesn't apply to this. I'm just pointing out the mm -hmm. obvious that it strikes me as absolutely bizarre that from our south gateway to our north gateway that a human being cannot safely walk on the sidewalk within something called our multimodal <laughs> transportation district. And now I understand why. It's because there just was no incentive or it just lost its importance or it's not close enough to the sponge dock, so everything south, this that didn't part work. Of the county, too? Well, that's, that's the other thing, too. There is a problem mean, with you that. Know, I mean, Alt 19 is a state road, so, you know, that's, so we have to work. So we don't, get it, we don't get to enforce any sidewalk criteria on alternate 19? That's going to be FDOT's jurisdiction. And you can, get, you can get sidewalks on state roads, but you need cooperation from FDOT. Mm. But there's not a mechanism to look back and fix all the missing pieces, broken, well, and, and that's exactly what the MMTD was designed to do: was to identify the gaps, create a work plan, and fund it. So, so it's we're talking. So you brought up that area. There's a uh, there's a property out Alt 19. Obviously, it's for sale, and I forgot what they said. Eighty something units. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Where it's just, it's just the south course. of the car wash. Mm -hmm. I mean, the golf oh. course. Mm -hmm. the south mm -hmm. of the golf course. Unincorporated County. Is that where that is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You've answered my question. I didn't mean okay. to take That's that okay. too far. So that reintroduction yeah. of the multimodal transportation district is something that's happening whether not part of this at all it's just something that needs to be brought back it, up as it, good it does and in fact you know I, I think our goal really would be to have a multimodal transportation plan for the whole city so not not just go, this district go, as going, well so. going back to that property as an example mm -hmm. okay 
because it's not within the city limits of the county property, mm -hmm. um, would would we be able to require when they go to annex? That's why we talked about annexation as being a big issue. How do you require? Um, you know the the uh, I guess you call the multimodal access points mm -hmm. or to be extended to properties like that. Otherwise, you know you're, we're we're missing the opportunity to force anybody who wants to develop that to to because now you're dumping eighty something cars onto uh, Alt nineteen. Um, maybe more difficult. I mean to I mean you know it if it, it, it a lot depends on how it you know if if it's. I, I just I don't know. We we would have let's say it's non-conforming and doesn't have sidewalks. If the county let them do that for some reason, um, and they want to annex the property in, I mean, if it's something that we felt extremely, you know, strong strongly about, uh, you know, I. I'll defer, to, I'll defer to the city attorney, but maybe there could be some sort of a specific annexation agreement that says that X, Y, and Z has to be done, or I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's really getting into the weeds. I, I, actually, as you were asking the question, I'm looking to see if you have the ability to connect impact fees to annexations. I actually don't. I, I'm not positive I'm, that you can do that. Mm. Um, I know that, that you can put conditions on an annexation, but an impact fee specifically is something that's very regulated by state statute, and I'm not positive that you could connect it to that. You don't talk about talking about. Oh yeah. When I, I, have got, it. I got a plan for down. I live down south. Okay. I got a plan for down south, but I won't drop. I it mean, I think that's the meeting. property that you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, it's like it's a Weichel has it advertised. You know, 80, 88 units or whatever. Then yeah. I'm looking at the density. I don't know how much acreage it is. Yeah. But it seemed like that would be a lot of density. He went, I, if it's the same one, about five years ago, he went in front of the county, mm -hmm. the owner, with an attorney that we know representing him, and got a density condenser. It's an affordable it housing to, development. To do, they attempted that. Those tax credit projects are wickedly difficult. Yeah. He was too late in the game for that. But he was trying to do a seven-story tower. I happened to be live in Grassy Point, HOA. We were part of the mailer. Mm -hmm. so they wanted to put a tower up that was within sight. Yeah, there, there is a development agreement, and my understanding is the development agreement is still active with the county for an affordable housing development there. Okay. So I'm sorry. No, apparently um, there's the penny for Pinellas has done well for Pinellas for affordable housing, which I don't think that when we everyone voted for that, that, that was going to be. <laughs> there was a substantial set aside for <laughs> affordable housing. At the um, and I might have missed this. I'm sorry, Renee. Uh, the center versus area, what's the significance of that change? Um, let's All the see. centers are changed to area. Used, mixed use centers. Of area versus centers. Um, I mean, do we have a, um, is, is there like a qualifying a, a number? Is there a... What is it? How does that signify it? Use area. Spread Use out. Use areas more. shall comply with the requirements of the city's multimodal transportation district. I don't recall why we changed it from areas I to think, centers. I think or centers we, to areas. I think it's because mixed use center is not necessarily a term that we typically use. And mixed use area is more all encompassing. It can apply all over the city if you have a mixed use project, whereas a mixed use center seems like something that's actually designated. I so I think that but it was there's just no not definition for either one. Then mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry. There's no specific definition for center or area. Then well, we have a definition for mixed use. Um, so I would say anything that's mixed use and falls under the mixed use definition. But I mean, it was clearly changed. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. ask. I mean, I hear I get it was coming at originally. The, I think the center designation was coming out again. We a lot of this, you. a huge amount of this, if not all of this section, was was taken verbatim out of the countywide plan rules. And so they were very focused on town centers, mixed use centers. So a lot of that language came out of the countywide plan. Well, it seems, I mean, so center versus area seems to make the area more broad and then adhere to comply means, well, we'll try to follow it. Comply is very strict. So you're making a, a, a very, it's, I mean, it's clarified language, but it's, it's, it's stricter language. You're saying that the area around a center is now must strictly comply with 
this where before it was this center had to adhere to it. So I, in some of the reasonings I like if they just said, you know, more stricter language or more um, inclusive or something that's a little bit more and well, not the other, clarified because yeah. it doesn't really clarify things. You're changing yeah. it, you know. It's it's understood, right? Yeah, and, and, and if the, that's what we need to do for whatever reason, that's fine. Because if it's right. with the code, you know, and then I, the smart code, I had a question about that. Okay, um, because I, I recently uh, was informed that the smart code or anything that's more restrictive cannot be changed until 2024. Um, if if our area, and I'm not sure exactly if it's like the last part of Tarpon Springs, is with, within 100 miles of... Um, <laughs> we were just talking Ian about that in the meeting. Matthew, what was the other one? I forgot. Um, we're outside of it. So we don't, we can change, we can set the smart code up to be, because I feel, when was the smart code put in? Um, it was adopted in 2011. Yeah. And I, I feel like we've kind of progressed, I mean, it may be a need another revamp for it. it, it we're, it's we're actually pro do. We're referring to it in here, and I don't think that's really wise, because that should also be so it, reworked. According to our Ford Pinellas contacts. So and we're out of that zone. That's we're, good. We yes, are out yeah. of the zone. <laughs> so. Um, the only Pinellas County cities that. We're like, uh, that's great. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Thankfully. Thank you. I was. Um, yeah, no, no worries. The other thing with the mixed use areas, it, you know. In the, it's really that, and, and maybe this doesn't clarify it as, as well as it should, the way it's written. The, the, the mixed use areas like the smart code, the sponge docks, that, that regulate, they, they all have to have a, a, their own specific special area plan in order to, it, which gets adopted as part <coughs> of the comp plan. So what we're saying is when you're, when you're adopting that, you need to take into consideration the multimodal transportation district requirements as part of that special area plan. And, you know, it, like if, um, if you look at the, the special area plan for the sponge docks and the, and, the, and the CRA, so there's a lot of, in addition to kind of just the, the character districts and establishing densities and intensities and, and preferred uses and stuff like that, there's also a whole section of that document that is, you know, place-based objectives and things, you know, more like physical improvements and things that we would like to see or special, you know, so it's, it's really trying to get to that um, with these changes. So it's, it's, you know, you know, that it's going to be more in the, those specific mixed use area land use designations, which we'll get to in a little bit. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. I was looking back and, and we refer to like mixed use land use categories and we specified in the objectives and policies, these categories fall under a mixed use land use category. So we're just trying to be more consistent with the terminology. Um, but yes, that's, and that's where why I, just, I always <laughs> just ask questions. Yeah. You know, when I think of these, you know, my transportation, I, I live in the area, so I just mm -hmm. visualize everything and I'm thinking uh, the, the trolley and I, I know how these things, <laughs> the trolley will run you down. They don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it will. So, you know, I'm, when we think about, you know, like other things that are coming our way, like more people on the sidewalks, you know, like I try to think of everything as, a, as comprehensively mm -hmm. as a whole when everything sure. comes our way. I want transportation, but I don't want um, stricter um, codes and enforcements on our businesses or right. residents. Can, can we go back up real quick to 5.2.9? Where it says the uh, change is the land development code to reduce parking requirements to create maximum parking standards. I don't, what's a maximum parking standard? So, uh, just like I was talking about a little while ago, um, retail, right now, our, all of our land development codes are minimum parking requirements. So, four per, if it's a retail development, four per thousand parking spaces, um, that's the number of parking you need. A lot of, especially in big box retail and stuff like, and office development, things like that, the developer wants five or six per thousand. So, and it's to that point that you're getting, that's, you're, you're sacrificing potential for trees and other things and, and amenities for parking because we don't have, we don't have a way to tell a developer, no, you can't, I mean, if they're still otherwise meeting their minimum tree planting requirements and their stormwater requirements, we don't have a mechanism to tell them 
you don't need six spaces per thousand because we have minimums, not maximums. But if we, if you have a, like you said, a heat, a heat, yeah, a heat it, zone. And this is all part of that. Yes. That would tie okay. in with okay. establishing those. Comes right back to that yeah. overall driving concept. Yeah. Because then you don't, forgive me, then you don't have to change all those building requirements, all that abstract. You just key back to reduction of heat sink, heat islands, and then it triggers that for every single development that there is. We, we talked this before you got here, we talked about sacrificing parking for more effective green, greenscaping instead of just some bushes on border bushes, but really intense planting. That's, that's part of the code hacking. I researched that. <laughs> or some little oaks that are dead. In, Eventually you eliminate in all parking. Years, right? Yeah. They just abandon yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Their water, they just plant them. Now you're approved and they die. And, and if I may be so bold, it's not so much just to get more green is that it, it's a fabulous place. It's done in a different way. I'm going to get a little bit wonky here. If done is as opposed to a mound and in a reverse, it becomes its own self-fulfilling stormwater retention as we mm -hmm. need more and more of it. I haven't seen the new Barbie movie, but apparently she just <laughs> floats from the house into the car. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> we just start to, to utilize that. just floating around I'll, and we I'll won't even need to, to watch park. That. <laughs> I'll have to pull up my Ken dolls. <laughs> That's a frightening picture. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got a lot of strike through, strike through, strike through. I'm looking for where we actually have changes versus strike through. Um, and actually, most of the rest of that section, of that objective is stricken through. Do we get to 5.4 where we start talking about workforce housing and affordable housing and things of that nature. <clears throat> while, you're, while you're looking at that, um, <clears throat> I'll just share that what I do see is that um, when your there was a case involving connecting to a sewer and water system um, and an impact fee for essentially an impact fee. And they said basically that because it wasn't based on the actual impact, it was just based on them being added to, to the city's water lines, um, that that was not sufficient to support any sort of impact fee. So I would have to kind of just, just on first blush, it doesn't look like you could do it because it has to be connected, reasonably connected to the, the use and what you're charging it for. Well, can't you just title it a different name? Mm. A rose by any other name. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it, it's something that I can look at yeah. to see if we can legally do that. Under section 5.4, the, the non, the new one, mm -hmm. right below the new policy that addresses, would this be a location for, additional types, I'm gonna read the last sentence. Zoning districts to allow for additional housing types to take advantage of existing density and I'm only going to mentally interpret that. Would that be tied to accessory dwellings and a relaxation of where accessory dwellings can be, and perhaps even the encouragement of accessory dwellings, a.k.a., this is my new term, granny flats. Mm -hmm. I just love how that goes together. <laughs> granny flats or accessory dwellings, garages with flats above that in some areas might be discouraged, but as we need to increase density at certain points, they should be encouraged. So is that a point where that is addressed or is that somewhere else? So this policy ties in uh, pretty nicely with, if you go, you know, our place-based area map, um, we, and we identify like our suburb, the suburban neighborhoods and we recognize there, 
a lot of those areas historically developed at densities less than what is allowed on paper, but they're established single family districts. So those are the areas, so in those areas, maybe granny flats, maybe duplexes, you know, it's something, that would, yeah, there, there are areas house. to, yeah, exactly, where you carriage could house. introduce some, some gentle, in, you know, increases that to accommodate some of those housing needs. Yeah, okay. does that, did that answer? It does, okay. it does. First, there'd have to be a demand and a request for that, or th there'd have to be the okay for it, and then the demand and request. R right, it's, it, again, it's, it's a, that place-based area map sets those up for where they could take place, but obviously I don't, you know, we have to be very mindful about how we would actually implement something like that, and it would have to be, you know, community input and involvement for the affected areas to say, hey, right now, single-family detached is pretty much the only thing. Now, granny flats or accessory dwelling units are allowed in every single-family residential district of the city now, but maybe we're looking at, you know, we might want to make that that language in the land development code a little more flexible because right now they have to be you know owner occupied. Well, maybe you maybe you you know maybe we, you want some flexibility. So we yeah. don't allow two meters. We make we make we make, we make them run off the master meter and feed them as a sub panel to the back. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of things that you know. So so yeah, it's it's just you know it's a policy to at least direct us to look at where we can make those types of changes if it's publicly acceptable you know we just we, you know, we don't just do it but that again and that would really be part of that that land development code set of amendments in the future if we're just looking at something like accessory dwelling units you know but if we're looking at a wholesale area and saying we want to you know we want to change or make you know duplexes you know a permitted or a conditional use in an area that really they're not now that that's big that's that requires public input and i mean that that's a that's a process <clears throat> when is that process instigated and when does it happen um if not now that's a that it, it can happen in various ways if 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 staff thinks that it's something that needs to be addressed you know we can we can you know, set up some sort of community engagement effort to see where it might be re you know, received. People might want it. Um, well, a, could, a neighborhood can come to you and say, we want it. You but, know, that, but that could also be a slippery slope. Because Absolutely. Because now you're, now you're getting into people say, okay, I'm going to have multifamily and now we're RBBO. And, you know. and Verbos are a different thing altogether. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whether you know it or not. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, I, the way I see it, it looks like we're working backwards. We're making it available to people to come in for, in case now all of a sudden it's needed and we'll have public input. Well, they're already lined up for their public input to, you know, prioritize residential development within a quarter mile of public transportation and needs of daily living. You know, the one of the things about Tarpon is, you know, a lot of the people that live here work outside of it. It's not, we're not St. Petersburg, where people in St. Pete don't leave St. Pete, and they don't want to. They're fine with just traveling around in St. Pete. I wouldn't, my parents always worked out of the city. Now, a lot of the people coming here now aren't like that, and they want to all live here, and that slows things down, and the, tra the public, I mean, mm -hmm. coming home from work is impossible because of the traffic, because people that live here, that move here recently, just want to, they live in Tarpon. They, they want to ride their bikes. They want to drive mm -hmm. 10 miles an hour. And that's fine. But the more that, that the public transportation, like, I don't want, you're, we're creating opportunities. And you're saying, well, if somebody wants to come in, then we'll have public input. But why are we changing it now to create an opportunity for public input if we're not, that demand isn't there now? Mm -hmm. So let's just leave it. Until somebody so asks for these things, why are we opening it up to say, hey, do you guys want this now? Mm -hmm. We've we've made it open so, for you. Now now come to your surveys, which are completely skewed. That we'll we'll date, and then we'll put our pulp. I mean, why? Just let them ask for it. No one's asking. We're we're full. Why are we making these opportunities so easy? We for people? so we still have to plan for a certain amount of population increase. A small <clears throat> amount in seventeen it's, years, we've very, it, we've increased less than I think was it three thousand people. It's very small. And so what? What we're what we're saying, so if you, you, you know, if you notice, we're not proposing 
any density increases at all as part of this. You're this. changing the vision, though. But mm -hmm. the, and so, and that's and that those cha those that place based area map, which identifies those kind of those you know, the suburban areas, the, the downtown areas, and stuff. When we that and maybe you know, maybe you don't accept the public input that we received so far. No, we, I don't. We've had a lot, <laughs> and that's 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 fine. But based on what we you know what we heard from from the public, is you know, of the housing types that they supported, there was support for one, two, three, and four family residential. Now I'm not saying we want to put that all over the whole city. Absolutely Where are you not. Put it? It's you know, it is a, well. No one's of, coming. No one's asking for it. Why are we making changes for people that haven't even asked we're for not, it? We're, I'm not. Well, saying we that we're, I'm not saying it's going to happen anywhere. Well, no, I'm but if it does, we're, we're making the opportunity it. in the future for it to happen. But until there's a public effort to do it hmm. and 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 put it in place, it, it you know that. Well, so <clears throat> you're you're saying we'll add it, but. Currently, there's no zoning for it. Correct. I mean, we're not, you know, I'm not proposing that when we update the land development code that all of a sudden in the R100 district that we're going to say single family, one, two, th you know, one, two, three, and four family are appropriate housing types in the R100 zoning district. No, that's not what, you know, that's, you know. Well, I mean, you yeah. know, the, the last Board of Commissioners meeting, I think, you know, I watched it twice. It took me a while to figure out how dangerously close our commission almost one vote short of basically almost allowing a zoning change based on a private agreement between a developer and an HOA president that we had no way of enforcing or making sure that it happened these people could have turned around and just sold the property and we almost just I mean why don't we just basically just set up private developers and neighbors and little mediation rooms let them work things out like we can't be making decisions but they can come to us we used to have it where they did have it have to have a conditional use plan for a zoning change so we can just go right back to that because we're not where we used to be you that, know, we, okay. we are we are very full we're, we're a, a city that has a lot to offer we should make it hard to come because hey we can be picky why, why are we just saying yes to everybody we should be saying no more we can choose who we want to come to our city and i don't i don't think we're doing that right i mean i, I don't think that we're saying yes to everybody no no we're not but <laughs> But, but the you know we're not we're kind of and, doing and, what we're doing this on this plan. code is we should be making it more restrictive and yet I feel like we're making it less restrictive. Mm -hmm. That is a policy decision. If this board wants to say, recommend that there's nothing in here that you know would facilitate any additional residential development over the next 30 years. Well, no, I'm saying smart development. That, I'm know. not saying no residential, but, like, I'm just trying to... And here's where it's a slippery slope. I want my mother-in-law to live with us, but I want to build, I want to build a, you know... A ADU, isn't that what that is? Yeah, what do you call it? What do you call it? A granny suite? I thought, oh, those ADUs or what? Accessory, the, accessory dwelling units. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to build one for my mother-in-law, you know, and... I could see the need for that as we have aging parents and we want to be able to provide family support, but I, I, I have a pro, you know, now somebody converts that to a, a rental. An Airbnb, yeah. Okay, uh, you know, or just a rental, you know, right. long-term rental. Right. And, and I think that the value, well, I think that it impacts the neighborhood as opposed to having a, the family unit living <clears throat> in, in the house with an attached mother-in-law suite or a detached mother-in-law suite. So I don't, I don't know how you control that or I don't know how you restrict that. But I think that's why you got the people wanted to see it because that's their thought, maybe their thought process is, you know, when I get old, maybe I give my house to my kids and I just move next door, mm. you know, um, which. I mean, right now there are, we have restrictive covenants that have to go in place to have an accessory dwelling unit. Okay. And we really allow that. But is it, is it, is, are those restrictive covenants to include Leasehold, in, leasehold interest, or can we re, re restrict leasehold interest? I, I'd have to look up what it says, but basically, it can't be separately metered. The the primary, it has to be. There are things that, frankly, I think are difficult to enforce, even though they're restrictive covenant. But um, you know, it has to be owner occupied. So the owner, you know, the owner. So you can't 
theoretically, if you have a house and you have an accessory dwelling unit and you've complied with all that, you know, the only pre per, you know, the only person that the owner has to live in the primary house. Okay. And you know, they, they can't be separately metered. There's um oh, there's a hand yeah, there's a restriction on the, the square footage, things of that nature. Um I thought we already had that. It was already allowed we, here. We, we I do. Think, yeah. That, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, all we're saying you know, all we're saying is that with this policy is that we recognize that, according to Florida statutes, we have to we have to accommodate for population a certain population growth. We have to do that, and we're saying that the best way for us to do that when we did the analysis is that our existing densities and intensity, our existing residential densities, versus what's actually developed is sufficient to to work within that. So, you still have an underlying density limitation. So. If you've got a 10,000 square foot lot that's got one house on it and the, and the density is five units per acre, you may not, even though the zoning might say you're eligible to have a duplex, you may not physically be able to do it. You may just not have enough density. They haven't done the calculations, but what we're, but that's what we're, so it's, it's very kind of area by area. You may not be able to just, the intent is not to just, you know, there are some cities that are literally abolishing single family zoning that's not what we're trying to do here. I think that's just, you know. Well, I know. I mean, but a lot yeah. of us, we're already a ton of, like, we're already mixed use. I mean, downtown has apartments and yeah. it has, I mean, we're already kind of, like, yeah. there. And so, I mean, it's like, what, how much more? But yet people still want more and they want more. And, it, you know, it's like the lifeboat. I mean, <laughs> you know, we can only sustain so much and, and still be a successful, you sure. know, city. So I just don't want to keep opening up until we can't sustain everything and everybody. No, I, I, I understand I understand what your, you know, what your concern is. And, and we're trying to meet housing needs across a range of incomes, too, which is really difficult. I, I, and and I a, understand. I just yeah. don't see it's even possible. <laughs> I don't really understand. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it, it does, does... Without an actual number and somebody here to propose something, how can we say something's affordable? Like, mm -hmm. I don't... Well, that's... Well, that, yeah, that's, an, <laughs> that's another matter altogether. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think Tarpon probably, just if you're looking at the Schimberg housing analysis, you know, we actually are in far better shape for meeting affordable housing needs here than the rest of Pinellas County, I would say. Um, the further south you go, the worse it gets. Um, you know, so I don't feel like that we have as nearly as much pressure for affordable housing needs here as you might see like in, in Clearwater, St. Pete areas. Mm. Um, so that, you know, we're kind of fortunate in that, you know, and I think, uh, to me, I think one of the, the, you know, one of the things that I think about Tarpon that's, really I don't know if it's unique but the thing that's really attractive to me is you know if you if you want a typical suburban you know house we got that you want an urban downtown lifestyle you know where you we've got that we've got beaches we've got I mean so you know you can you, we've even got some you know less dense areas as you go out you know farther farther to the east where you know we're saying agriculture is appropriate you know so you know, you've got something for everybody, and I think that's what we're trying to, you know, I think that's important to hang on to. Agreed, um, yeah. I absolutely agree with that, and that's what we're, that's really what we're trying to get at with that place-based area map. So, you know, if, and we, you know, and what we heard from the residents when we did the, you know, the outreach, and we're going to have to do all that again as we start going through, you know, adoption and stuff. So that, you know, one, two, three, and four family, and when we when we showed those housing types and what people were thought were acceptable housing types in these in these areas, that's what we were getting. You know, you weren't getting feedback, you know, for anything that was more than probably, you know, four plexes and eight plexes. They don't want it. You know, we and we heard that loud and clear. So you know, in these, you know, and that's only in the really the, the the more dense areas, the downtown areas, where even those things would, you know, are, are acceptable. So so we, we heard that. So we got, you know, I think we're fortunate in that we do have untapped density available. It's just we have to 
if we're going to tap it, it needs to be tapped in a very context sensitive manner that doesn't upset the balance of everything. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, just the transportation thing, you know, the buses, the way they stop now can hold up traffic for, I mean, 10 to 15 minutes on alternate 19, and it makes it impossible to get out of Tarpon. That's the biggest hassle for a lot of residents is just, just getting across the street. <laughs> well, I don't see the buses going anywhere, so, and that's not, oh, in a that's car. not ours. In a car, getting yeah, across no, the street know, in so, a car. I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I understand. All right, so, um, so objective 5.4, again, we're talking about workforce housing opportunities. Um, a lot of this is really housing and affordable housing based. Um, I'll let y'all kind of chew on that and there's other questions that you might have about this section. And this, we have a lot of overlap with the transportation element. So I know we, we were trying not to have duplicative policies and objectives <coughs> between future land use and, and transportation. But again, if it's something that is really important to you or you think needs to stay in the future land use element, then you know, we can certainly do that. We in six yet? Okay. Question for you. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, at, well, I'm sorry. I've gone to six already. So mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait till we get there. Uh, I'm at six. I'm at six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, let's be at six. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> How many chickens can we allow? <laughs> um, <laughs> who's going to enforce that? <laughs> That's actually, what? We have a chicken problem. We're, we have a chicken ordinance. Where are you, what are you talking about? Well, agri you, urban agricultural. agricultural. Oh, urban, urban agriculture, yeah. Yes. No, yeah. we've, yeah. And farming. You know, that, if I'm that, a farmer, I have chickens. I may have so something else. We actually, we actually have an, ur an urban chicken ordinance already um, in place. I, I know because yeah. there's, there's somebody down next to the softball field. Um, and, it, you know, a lot of this also gets more to, you know, community gardens and, and things of that nature and at least trying to have you know, some agricultural, urban agricultural uses in the city. Um, whether it's, right now everything is really geared toward your personal use. There's really not a lot of you know, outlets or areas for, you know, for urban farming as a, as a profession, so to speak, or a place where you can actually invite the public in, sell goods and things like that, so. It's a we sustainability could, thing. We could have endangered tarpon chickens like they have endangered key chickens. <laughs> right. And have them add charm to our town. We were we were just discussing the other day that we were a little bereft because we hadn't seen our favorite fluffy footed chicken out here on the trail that <laughs> close mm. by City Hall. We see them all the time. But probably not the point of the I have a question about yeah. six, but I think someone else did first. I didn't want to Cut in line. No, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, six. Policy 6.4.1, which has remained in policy 6.4.2, which has remained 
but under notes, move to objective 1.1, move to objective 1.1. So I'm at objective 1.1, which is many, many pages back. You got to mm -hmm. go find it, right? Okay. So here's my question. How does something as specific, and I'll read it, protect the city's remaining industrial designation? remaining industrial designated lands from incremental land use amendments to non-industrial uses and just mm -hmm. might as well add the other one evaluate the permitted and conditional uses within industrial added zoning districts and amend where necessary to protect the integrity of the industrial designations okay they're both getting to the same point is there's a fixed amount of current industrial use I, I think there's only a couple places where it is but it says move to objective 1.1, but I'm reading objective 1.1, and maybe there's just a whole bunch of language missing, is that it doesn't say a thing about industrial uses. Where did that go? So moved under objective 1.1, and again, there might be a whole bunch more to objective 1.1 that just can't be played out here. Sometimes I have to go to the clean version and look. Mm. Is it 1.1? 1. 1. Now it's 1.1.6. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's easier great. To, it might be to easier to look at the clean version because it's all in order. Yeah. And you can look at 1.1.6. But oh, so much paper. And, and this also, you have to, you know, objectives fall under different goals. So you have to look at the goal language mm. and then the objective and then the policy. So it's a little tiered. Okay. Out. Moved under objective 1.1. Okay, so then it became a policy. Yep. Oh, golly gee, of course, 1.1, 1 1.7. 1 just, seven, yeah. just I can't read is pretty much what it says. It's hard okay. to follow this hard. stuff. It really it's is. Really <laughs> okay, but that would... The word industrial isn't there, though. That could be it. And then but that that would segue into... There is an intense amount of pressure on our industrial stuff. This is a great policy, whether that industrial use is maritime industrial, as found on the south side of the Anquote mm -hmm. River at the sponge docks at the end that's mm -hmm. being pressured by restaurant use. Would that be an, a, a, an example of protecting industrial use where we're losing our working waterfront to multi-level restaurants? Um, that certainly is part of it. Um, now... Inside the special area plan, that's that's kind of on the south side, of, you know, toward the end of the sponge dock. That's a lot of that's already in the special area plan. Some of it though is industrial, you know, stamina shots. So yes, that all that all applies. And certainly on the north side of the river, potentially losing, in, you know, industrial to, you know, the, I mean, again, the, the the pressure is for residential development. So. So that is the segue I was really looking for is that 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 area north west river mm -hmm. where I'll disclaim my oldest daughter lives on Jeru mm -hmm. Boulevard, which is a series of duplexes. She has a single family residence and right behind her is a boat yep. diesel engine repair shop and it is stunning what comes out of that. Yeah. So it's a, just a living example because I'm there every day of that industrial residential mm -hmm. the desire for more residential the protection of industrial so and that area is going to get more and more pressure yeah and perhaps a special area plan for that zone mm -hmm. that area that center yep okay that was a plan of words from the past <laughs> Is that something that is in the works or that could be addressed? So again, yeah. So again, if you go, if you look at that place-based area map, that whole area we categorize as transitional, and specifically stating that it needs its own planning effort. Um, yeah, because I think yeah. what that, that yeah, north, the north side of the river. Yeah. You know, it, it, believe it or not, I mean, tourists love to see a working waterfront. It's not the shops. Mm -hmm. It's not, even though they're the restaurants are the best, I think, in, in the state, it, it's the working waterfront that, that people love to see. And, and if we start taking away mm -hmm. that north, the, the north side of the river from, from that industry, then that will change this, the character uh, that's in, and, irreversible. And that, those areas are, what you're talking about, Mike, is, is also captured on that place-based area map. There's a stack of them right here. 
we've you know we've carved out the working waterfront areas, um, the, the heavier waterfront, and then you've got the more transitional areas, which is farther up in the. So, would actions have to take place for that additional planning for a special area plan? What what do we need to do to make that from a good concept? Hey, we've recognized the demand and the need. Now that's a whole nother work, mm -hmm. like you need more work, but, <clears throat> but how do we move that forward so that's evaluated on its own? Um, again, and that, that happens through policy, so directive policies in the future land use element. And uh, did we specifically put one in well, for the have, place? Yeah. We have, where we basically recognize the place-based area map. Um, I think it's under a- We've said it needs to happen as part of the place-based area but a separate policy. Yeah, so we have goal two, and it's um, objective 2.1 just basically establishes that map and then the purpose behind it. And then we have all the different categories with their intent statements, which say require you know additional planning efforts, but that sets the policy by having it in the comp plan. So we can we can go to the commission, the commission can come to us, someone can come to us, and we have the policy to back up an additional planning effort. So then it becomes an effort, it becomes incumbent on the planning department to say, this is, you know, we need to either we're internally going to do it, you know, or we need to hire a consultant or somebody, but we need to do a special planning effort for yeah. that area. The other area is the, is the U.S. 19 corridor that we're... We, we, yeah, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to <coughs> see the city make it very, very difficult for, for that to change mm -hmm. the character. Because, you know, and I'll give you the example, political pressure in Pasco County, uh, uh, what is it, Holiday Park? Mm -hmm. We want to try to convert that into a large marina mm -hmm. and restaurants and the whole nine yards and and because somebody with you know quite a bit of money and some political pressure. Oh, you're talking about Anklo Park, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, yeah. And, and that would devastate that would devastate the working waterfront, quite frankly. Well, I don't know enough <coughs> about the area to to weigh in on that, but if there was additional verbiage that we could put in now that would create a sense of urgency rather than. We need to look at that too. Right. That, Let's we, look at it by a year or a date, or and, and even call that out because there's other areas that need it too. This one's close yep. to my heart, so I'm just going to say, hey, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that just from what I see driving through there, it's going to start tipping, and if we're not ahead of it, it's yep. going to get ahead of us. Um, and I like to make a point about you know areas in the city being close to your heart. You know? <laughs> I've expressed you know that many times here, um, and it's I think it's important to remember that we're not here to change things for like around people that move here and where they live because they don't like where they live and what's happening around them. You know, if you don't, I'm on the community page sometimes. I'm not allowed on there, but I do go on there. And it's hilarious how people go on there and they're like, where do I find this? Where do I find this? Where do I send my kids to school? How did you get here? I don't know how you <laughs> moved to Tarpon Springs and have zero clue about our community. Okay, I live at this Sponge Docks. I was, you know, my dad was raised there. There's music from three different places at all times. And I don't complain because I live there. This is my, I chose this. I cannot complain about it. I'm not going to go to the city and say, rework everything around me so that I am more comfortable. No, you know what, if I don't like it, I'll just go someplace else. And that's what we need, the message we need to send people is we can be better, but we're not gonna change because you move here and you want something better and different than just don't come here. I, I think this board is non-transitory. You, know, um, you know, like I live here, I work here, I'll die here, get buried here. His mom lives down the road from me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we try to bring a perspective like that, and whether anyone wants to listen, that's fine. But you know, I, it, it is is one, and I listen to everybody else's as well because I think that's why we're here is to bring. Otherwise, we just say every, everything's written down. So we try to bring an extra effort, like to like, hey, this is. It's it, it, it and it's a balancing act to move, try to move forward and preserve the character that we mm -hmm. have. It's real. It's really difficult. It really is difficult. It because, is. It you is. Know, just in my lifetime where I've seen I've seen the, 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 the change of this community and, and not that change is bad but too much change too quickly really doesn't benefit sure. the, 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 the uh, uh, why people moved here to to mr. Vesey's point you know we can we can wordsmith some example policies that you know we can look to include that are a little more directive um, if that's something that you know of within X number of years, you know, conduct a special planning area or planning effort for you know, these areas to 
to further guide growth and development or however that we, ha we can come up with something to, to that effect that's a little more directive than, than, than how it is now. That's not a problem. And that's just a thought. Yeah. And to segue off what the lady said and the gentleman is that I've seen two residential developments be put in that industrial area because there's not a good plan in place. Now, one might be outside, one might be inside, but if, the, if there aren't good guidelines established, the developers will find the workaround. They always do. They'll well, find the loophole and they'll work around. And, and just to just make sure that everybody is aware, you know, under the, the Live Local Act that was adopted on, it goes into effect October 1st, we have some prime properties up there that can't do anything about. We can't do anything about that very well may end up being, you know, basically mid-level affordable housing. It could be up to 120% AMI. And not only are you not going to see it, the board's not going to see it because we have to administratively review them. And so it, it's a, I'll, I'll, I don't know if you want to take a moment to talk about the Live Local <laughs> Act or, you know, we're, we're evaluating it now. We intend to try to put some something together for, um, for everybody so that people do understand that this is coming and we're trying to identify. So these are the zoning districts where <laughs> it's applicable. These are, you know, and it goes as far as saying we have to allow whatever the maximum density that's allowed in the city, we have to allow that. Whatever the maximum height that's allowed within a mile of the project, we have to allow that. Um, it, it basically, it, it, it obliterates local home rule for these projects. And so just putting it out there, it, I mean, basically industrial, commercial, and mixed-use zoning are all on the table. And there's not, you will not have a public hearing. You will not, unless, unless the city decides to challenge something and say, we're just not going to, we're going to let it play out in court. That's obviously an option. But um, it, so it's going to be, and, and I'm, I, my fear is that the properties on the north side of the river are prime targets. Doesn't matter about coastal high hazard area. Doesn't matter about. I mean, they still have to meet. You know, they have to they meet. You know, stormwater and land. You know, and things like that. But height and density. You know, our and our hands are like mm -hmm. shackled. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so your best laid plans, Mr. Vesey, I'm afraid. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> hmm? I guess a good catch. Mm. At least the cost of the property will make it a little more difficult for them. It might. Well, and then Ford Pinellas is of the, like, mindset is to not change everything automatically, right? Is that... For industrial? Well, no, in, I mean, in preparation of the live. I thought it went in July 1st, but I, guess maybe <coughs> that postponed. I thought it was, oh. October. I think it was in April. Or maybe it was signed in. I thought maybe it's their specific. Yeah, I think there's a grace period. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, but I'm um, sorry, I asked your Ford Pinellas. Right, on, the, on their website. Um, because I know a lot of the counties are we're trying, in, in, in knowing that that's coming in preparation for it, making their code, I guess, more amenable to some developers and, you know, but the Ford Pinellas site, I went on there and I looked and they're saying, don't change it just yet. Don't do mm -hmm. anything. And, you know, especially if, you know, I guess you're a little bit more full than some other mm -hmm. counties and just kind of wait and see. But what, you know, some of the things that we're thinking about are, you know, okay, we, you know, if we have to respond to the Live Local Act, so like right now in the industrial districts, you know, we've, we don't have anything for how residential to take density and height, density and, and height off the table. But all the other, you know, we could say, okay, you have to abide by the dimensional criteria of the RM zoning district, something, or you've got to have, if it's, you know, if the pro, if it's adjacent to actual developed industrial, you've got to have a buffer of X. And those are the types of things that I think we can put in place. Um, to respond to that, whether or not if we, I don't you know how quickly we can get something like that done, um, is, but that's some of the stuff that we're looking at. Well, I guess it would be like if they can do it without us changing anything, then just let them do it without changing something that they, we don't need to change maybe, I guess. Right. Know, right. No. Yeah. I, our, I, the, it seems like the intent is what, what at least we would like to be able, are we having a tornado? Does no, anybody an know? Alert. 
Oh, it's an Amber Alert. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Because uh, there was a storm going on, and I'm like, do we want to be on the second floor of this building right now? Please, um, <laughs> um, I think some basic guidance of here's how we interpret it and how we intend to administer it. We also have a 10-day turnaround time to respond to an application. So, I mean, that they put that in, in, and if we don't, it's just deemed approved. So we got, we got to get our ducks oh. in a row. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. So, so there's a lot of things that came out of that Live Local Act. Um, if what you like, we can- time that any, since it doesn't have to go through any of the boards that we would know about it. Like the city, I guess, the residents. I mean, it, what we would intend to use would be our technical review committee, but they only meet once a month. So I can't, sometimes I may not be able to say, we got an application in for a project under Live Local, you know, and I want to put it on the next TRC meeting. If that TRC meeting is three weeks away, I can't do that. We're going to have, so we have to figure out how we're going to operate. So, I mean, we'll do our best. I think what, you know, some of the things we've talked about was, you know, putting a Connect Tarpon page up okay. with, you know, at least, to, you know, so that we can inform people. Um, so we're still working through all of that. But I just, I did want to put it on your radar. And if you're interested, we can forward a link to a, recent webinar that was last week that one of the uh, like central planning committees, uh, one of the regional planning agencies put on. Um, and it was 10 days. I knew it was yeah. quick, but damn. That's yeah, it, yeah, it is. <laughs> so we can forward that if you're interested in watching that, that webinar. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty informative. So. Well, and it, it, at least the properties that would be potentially involved in that aren't on the water. So they, they don't affect the view across the water to the to the docks and everything there you know i'd still hate to see it happen to some of those areas over there but I, yeah I, I i mean i would i would think it would be very difficult to waterfront property is just a different animal altogether i just can't imagine that they can pencil a project and make something like that work and there's yeah there's yeah. no significant unbuilt properties i mean yeah. i I live on the North Bank and I work on the North Bank and and uh, there's the stuff that's further inland. There's not is, anywhere yeah. that's mm -hmm. not inland. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Regina, how long does that is that like is until they run out of the seven hundred eleven million dollars or five whatever like how <coughs> so long is that? There's very, there's actually various dates in because I'm looking at the actual laws of Florida. It's Chapter twenty twenty three dash seventeen laws of Florida, and that's kind of I'm sc scrolling through it, and they have different sections that have different expiration dates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some go as long as as <clears throat> like twenty thirty three. Some are a lot closer, like twenty twenty six. So. Um, but also remember with those expiration dates and a subsequent session, they can go back and they can make those, they can change those dates. They can change those the sunsets, which, which yeah. happens sometimes. It's not it, forever. It may <laughs> depend, well, it may depend whether or not they get funding in subsequent right. years for some of those, those programs that they're implementing. Okay. So. Thanks. And, and it does take effect. I did look at, it is July 1st oh. is the effective okay. date. Mm. Um, I was trying to find the, the paragraph with the grace period. I think October 1st were certain things that we, we have do. to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right, so we were on 6.2, I guess. Or 6. Point, I'm sorry, 6.4. That was where Mr. Vesey left off with his questions. So. Mr. Vesey had left off it. He was had brought questions up about the the industrial stuff. That was policy six point four point one and point two, okay. under the old you know the current language. All right. Looks to me like everything up to about seven is things that's that's that you you've listed where it was moved to or what it was combined with or or relatively minor text changes. Pretty close. And 
then, like, you I know, heard it mentioned at one previous meeting. Yeah. What's that? I'm sorry. The Live Local Act. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> There's been a lot of postings, articles, stuff coming out about it. So, we talked about it briefly, I think, in the very first workshop. Which is what? <coughs> local. The Live mm -hmm. Local, but it was like kind of. It's what? The Live Local Act. That's what we're talking that, about. That, that, yeah. The local Act. We live local anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What, what it requires housing by that, industrial and, and commercial. Mm -hmm. Pat, would that have been included in the in the legislative update that you were forwarding to us on a regular basis? Was that Live Local Act in there? It was in there. Mm. I, this year, I will be forwarding you the continuous, but I did forward you the, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the contribute session of the And yes, mm -hmm. it was in the Senate Bill 102. Renee, what's the effect on uh, like vacant land and uh, with in terms of that? Was it live local? Yeah, I mean anything. Something had come out of one of our future land use things where that I thought that was a good thing, but looking back, I'm not so sure as far as any type of I don't know eminent domain or anything. I'm just worried about like those. Oh, um, or because I think there was also a clause in there about commercial property and how they can, good. if something's owned commercially, they can just. They can just use that too. They don't even need to worry about it. it. Yeah, it it's yeah. It applies to commercial, commercially zoned, industrially zoned, and mixed, mixed use, use zoned. Mm -hmm. The thing that was most interesting about the webinar that I watched last week, they had an attorney that was that gave a briefing at the beginning of it, and and I don't fully understand this, but the apparently the the way it's written, it it pretty much just disregard your comprehensive plan so yeah. it you know so things like whatever the, you know land use doesn't really come into play apparently because um, that's part of the comp plan I, you know regina jump in and tell me if i'm wrong no, but you're right so so you know we have you know so any zoning district that has residential plus any kind of not the only thing it seems sacrosanct is pure residential zone, zoning. Right. So, you know, all of our single family and our residential multifamily districts do not apply. Mm -hmm. And so, I think you know, obviously, it just seemed like there was a, you know, there was a conscious attempt to basically in industrial, commercial, and mixed use areas. So, if it's a residential office, you know, that. The, you know, if it's an affordable housing project that has at least 40% of its units at 120% AMI, which really is workforce housing, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's probably about, you know, an income level of $65,000, $70,000, you know, in this area. So, you know, if that, you know, and then break that into your rental, you know, whatever, that's what is required to, uh, or what is allowed to mm -hmm. develop on those commercial, industrial, and mixed-use zoned properties. And doesn't matter what, so, and then the, the density is based on the, the highest density within, in your jurisdiction, within one mile, mm -hmm. and same thing for height. Mm -hmm. The things that I'm a little sticky on, does that mean, so like, we have, and, it, and it's, it's, you know, commercial and whatever the height is you know so so for in our highway business zoning district we have one use hotels which are allowed a height of 70 feet so yeah is so, that the height that we have to allow if it's if the project is within one mile, one mile. of that zone that's so, so that's yeah. what it says it says a municipality yeah. may not restrict the height of a proposed development authorized under this subsection below the highest currently allowed height for a commercial or residential development located in its jurisdiction within one mile of the proposed development or three stories, whichever is higher. Mm. So, so they get the higher of the If the city two. wasn't proposing to buy the Roosevelt property, would that be a place that they could? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. well, and, and so if, if the development that we saw a few years ago that had part industrial and part residential mm -hmm. and and most really more industrial probably as far as the mm -hmm. square footage goes 
today under that, it this could says, have been yeah. entirely. No, because it says sixty-five percent of the total square footage must okay. be used for residential purposes under the legislation. Mm. Or when it's a mixed use. When it's the mixed, mm -hmm. yeah. If it's a mixed it's a use minimum development, of. minimum. But, at least. but it could be 100%. But if they wanted it could to be 100% 100 residential. The but the, but it seems to be very, to. but it's very focused yeah. on rentals. It's not, voc it's single family detached, even if it's affordable, is generally, from what I'm being told, is not, is not a product that's in play here. It's, so it's, it's multifamily residential rental is what this is really targeting. Mm -hmm. But if that's what had been proposed, then yeah, I mean that's. Well, it says is this a planning emergency? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's an emergency, but we're having to deal with it. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, so we're at a workshop, going into every minute detail about making a nice organized plan, and this just gets <laughs> dropped and says your rules mean. Nothing. I, I mean, I've been, yeah. I've been reading about it because yeah. we talked about it in the very first meeting, so I've been researching it. Yeah. <laughs> <So> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, we're, I mean, we're just, we, we I'm we, glad I'd missed it all along. I'd be sick to my stomach. We feel like that, that there's going to be certain properties that are going to become extremely attractive. What about, what for about like Krakor's, Krakor's Park? Like, would that be, is that not big it's enough? That's that that actually is recreation so land use. Safe. So safe, that yeah. one's safe. Okay, that one's safe. <laughs> There's good news. Is the zoning There's a property for sale right across no, the from my is business. Not. That mm. it's it's prime. Now the oh, well, the zoning on it is residential. Oh, that's so it may not it may it may not be protected. Right so, you know, 22 you units to the acre essentially is what we're looking at as, you know, potential but the warning that you'll have is like, they'll just come to you and then you have to, I mean, that's- this, <laughs> Here's an application. That, the, yeah, and it says they must. I mean, it's a whole list of things that yeah. they just have to approve. But I mean, you won't go to like the building. Well, the building department they will have certainly to have that. to review. Yeah, they'll have, have some yeah. heads up and like- yeah, I mean, we'll be the entry point. Yeah. Okay, but still that's what I'm saying. You and then, yeah. then you'll put it on like Connect Tarpon. I mean, I you guess. Know, I, we'll, just to like say, hey. <laughs> we'll try to do something like that, yes, at least as a, you know, so that p people do know what's coming. Not that it will do any good, but we'll, we can definitely, so you know, yeah. So you know, like you said, it's yeah. across the street. <coughs> yeah. Because then, so, you know, what yeah, we'll get is people be like, well, how did this happen? And why didn't you tell me? Right. Yeah. So <laughs> and that's, that's why we, I mean, we do want to have a general information page on the Live Local Act, what, what the affected Tarpon Springs might be, what zoning districts where um, it could, you know, you know, yeah. we kind of, we're trying to lay those things out at least so that people do understand and they're not, you know, completely surprised when it happens. So the Chorus Park is safe. It's in R60. Okay. Good. <laughs> so okay. it's oh, it's pretty residential. That's yeah, right. It is. Like so it's R60. Okay. Yeah. Can we rezone a few things real quick? <laughs> <laughs> in in the corporate store, world, so. they call it a poison <laughs> pill, right? There's still time for a poison pill. There's there's some parcels <laughs> over there that I'd rather be single family <laughs> residential right now for sure. <laughs> That's an interesting approach. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Resetting the entire city. Beat them, beat them at their own game. Well, let, let me ask you a oh. question. Is, is the commission parallel with what we're doing? Are they, you know, the changes that were, were you know. And for the comp plan? Yeah. The, no, at this point, I am. We are solely working with y'all to get to a hopefully work. a product that that, you can mm -hmm. present that I can present. Yeah, because Someone's I don't see them spending the time or spending the exactly. No, that I think, and I think they welcome y'all. You know, your you know, your input and 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 wordsmithing and everything on this. So, because yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, there, there's other other issues on the table. So. Um, all right, so we were. Hmm? Or goal seven. Mm -hmm. We get all the way to goal seven? Okay, so now we're on to that's the temporary we, lodging facilities, which we pretty much got rid of. And there's a, yeah, there's a big <laughs> table and everything that's just gone. You want to yeah. just briefly explain to us what's. So that What's table, gone yeah, here. that table again was something that was in the countywide plan rules that we adopted. I don't know when that took place. Uh, was that while I was gone? Yeah, to take it. So the county developed this alternative temporary lodging density 
process <laughs> to allow for higher like hotel you know densities you know to yeah. um, so that um, we adopted that into the plan um, it, it it was by development agreement only I believe to be able to take advantage of these so this is like in, in lieu of our standard 40 units per acre hotel density if you wanted to go through a development agreement and go through a special process, you could get these higher hotel density units per acre through a process. So we have basically jettisoned all of that. And where did we land on this? So this, <laughs> this one, I think all the information that's in here was not current. Because yeah, since it was yeah. originally put into the plan, Forward Pinellas was updated. Mm. So to avoid those issues, we removed the specific Thank you. Okay. language. And then in the land use categories, which is the table that we'll discuss next or next time, um, we basically just referred to that section of the countywide plan. So okay. it's still an opportunity, but it's just now it's consistent. with. Yeah, so county. we're just referring to the process yeah. that, uh, under the countywide plan. Versus, because this is yeah, this is out of date. It didn't keep step with no. every time they made a change. And that brings us to the end, doesn't it? Um, this would be a good place for a break. Do y'all want to take a break? I hear I hear the need for a break. <clears throat> Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, Mr. Chairman, how many minutes? <laughs> uh, Ten minutes. Ten minutes. All right. Oh, all right. Okay. Excellent.
all the future land use categories. Is that the flu categories? Yes. And then a different um, handout. <coughs> so, um, so it should be a strike through underline. It should be dated May 11th, I think. Is that the latest yeah. one, Allie? Yeah. May 11th. It says flu. Table, no, clean. This, this is even more difficult to read through the strike through. But we <laughs> so, yeah. so, so what are we going to? The actual future land use map categories and rule yeah. uh, categories. Categories and rules. Yeah. Strike through page. Should we look for this with the map? We have a map, too. Oh, okay. <clears throat> And that's, that's this one? No. It says place based area. No. no. So current land use. Future lands map, current and proposed. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that one. Okay. It's a mystery. I mean, it looks good. I'm looking at it. It looks the same. Current versus future. It came in a blue. And this future land use map, is that the one that is a result of the questionnaire that we did <coughs> months ago? What's up? Everything is a result of the questionnaire. Okay, remember we did a questionnaire several months ago on our input where we want to see. And, and so this proposed future land use map, is that is that the result of that? Uh, so, all right, so what's this? I think. This might be one where we need to give somewhat of a high-level overview. And Allie, didn't we have a couple of slides? Yeah. Oh, they're up there. Yeah, okay. Sorry. There's All right. two slides. Okay. Um, so I think the the bulk of the changes are we were trying to follow with the countywide plan. They combined a lot of their commercial categories, they had a you know whole bunch of them, into one one category called retail and services. So we would you know, we would ideally like to reduce the number of land use map categories that we have, because we have zoning as well, so to help control things. So we picked up so the current but we also recognize that we also probably need to have some breakdowns with retail and services versus you know, inside a, you know, in a, you know, like Alt-19 versus US-19. Those are different animals. So, so what's now commercial neighborhood would become retail and services uh, neighborhood. Really no, so all these are name changes, essentially. Mm. Some of the changes do affect floor area ratio and, and, impervious surface ratio so we'll talk about those so we also so then we took you know industrial limited would become employment again that's a rename um, industrial general just becomes industrial and that's consistent with also how Pinellas County I believe has theirs named as well so we're trying to just follow suit and be consistent with not consistent as in we have to be con just similar um, CRD the community development district um, that would become activity center again no real changes there other than a name change the commercial general fishing would become retail and services water dependent again these are just kind of consistency name changes the industrial general waterfront category would become industrial employment waterfront dependent and the, then we have a new category that's planned redevelopment district and multimodal corridor. Those are new, they're not on the map, but they're new categories. Um, so like that planned redevelopment district is something that would probably, if we wanted to expand the smart code area or do another similar you know, process, we would probably use the planned redevelopment district as a land use category. It would have a special area plan and everything would have to be attached to that, similar to what we did with the smart code. Multimodal corridor, again, that's, those two districts are, we're really taking um, uh, our cues from the countywide plan on those, and then multimodal corridor is just that. It's, you know, it's US-19 essentially where, you know, that's, you know, based on discussion, that, that might be a discussion point for y'all. Um, if we were gonna try to do a special area plan for the US-19 corridor, it would probably be designated as multimodal corridor on the land use map. So, do you want the rest of the yeah, go ahead. Okay. 
So these are all the new categories and ones that were renamed. These are ones that we combined. So then we had some, comp some where we combined um, some of the districts. So we've got resort facilities medium, resort facilities high. Um, those just become resort and we reduce, looks like we actually reduce the density down from 50 hotel units to 30 units per acre on those. Institutional, we just renamed public semi-public. Uh, transportation utility becomes public semi-public. Those were, we, those were combined. Um, and then it looks like we reduced the floor area ratio from 0.7 to 0.25. Um, so commercial to retail and services takes away storage, right? Isn't that something that's, could storage be under commercial that which now would not be under retail and services? It's uh, it. Huh? It's, it's a lot, and CG, um, storage use is, is already permitted. It's so it's, our, it's under retail and services as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to find mm -hmm. the difference. If it's, yeah. Okay. So, you know, so to that point, the, so the commercial general to retail and services, then we talked about this. This is where you would get that increase in, you know, there's, a, there's an increase in, dense, in lodging density, hotel density would go up to 40. Again, that's just being kind of consistent with 40 units per acre. Um, and then commercial, let's say commercial limited, combined with CG expanded to, so, okay, that was no name change. So commercial limited, so commercial general. These new changes, mm -hmm. if Moses Tucker comes back, which apparently now they have to start all over, they don't even need to come back, right? Isn't, won't this change? If, I'm trying to, I mean, so, they won't have to come no, back. It's the, the residential office retail. They'll come back for the zoning, now. I'm saying. They can just come back for whatever they want. Yeah, you know, I mean, no, and yeah, that, that would be under this, if it, they would be, they would go to retail and services. So all of those, the commercial general, commercial limited, commercial rec, and residential office retail would all become one category of retail and services. And it would basically, <coughs> to your point, yes, they would, they would not have to. Get that zoning change. Because they would not have to, they would not have to be back for a land use map amendment to do what they want to do. This, this would recognize the increase in the floor area. Um, and the, FA, and the impervious surface ratio to be consistent with what's allowed in the highway business now. Mm. Um, that certainly is, again, kind of open for debate. I know there was some concern about that increase in, in FAR. So this is a good place to maybe talk about that, recognizing that in, if this is just not palatable to y'all at this point, I'm fine with pulling that out because I've also... On the other side of this, we've recognized that the US 19 corridor is transitional and it needs a special planning effort. So this may be cart before the horse, is my yeah, point. It would be helpful to have the map because it's really hard to yeah. see yeah. what. Uh, I'm still kind of learning what all so the categories the, are. Right now. <laughs> so on the strike through table, even though it's also confusing, um, it at least shows in each of the categories the additional uses, I think. Yeah, so there's some, yeah. So, all right. Um, so we're, we're, it, may, it may help a little bit. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> I think I, I would be hesitant on the floor area ratio change, uh, particularly in an, in an area where we know we're, we're already dealing with an artery at, a, at an F level of service. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that in, allows density increases over the existing, I think we'd need to look at real yeah. closely. I just want to provide a little clarity sure. for, for that retail and services category. Um, the only category where the FAR would potentially be increased is properties that have that ROR designation. designation. Mm -hmm. The CG, CL, and CR already have the same um, floor area ratio. Yeah. So that's the only category that would be increased. So and so that's that, you know, it does include that, that Moses Tucker property mm -hmm. and, you know, any other vacant properties basically from the north side of the river up to the county line. So it's really that, that's really where the ROR is located. So it's, it's a handful of properties. Um, and again, if, if, if we think that I'm perfectly okay, if we want, if you want to pull out that ROR at this point and deal with it in the future, well, keep the like CGCL and CR as retail and services. Well, after everything with the Moses Tucker, <laughs> 
you know, go, that whole process of coming and, you know, saying no and saying no and saying no. And, like, when I prepare my clients for, like, depositions, I always tell them, if you don't know the answer or you don't, you don't know, you don't remember, you just stick with that answer. Now, they're going to ask you a different way, but <laughs> you're not going to change your answer because they're going to just keep asking different ways, but they're asking the same thing, so don't get confused. But eventually, sometimes you just muddy the waters and you ask them, and then all of a sudden, oh, you get a different answer. And now, and so I think that's kind of what happened there. And the more I thought about, well, we couldn't explain why it was the way it was. Maybe that's why it was the way it was, to prevent mm. <laughs> that. <laughs> it was an odd thing, and maybe, you know, whatever that use that it prevents, you know, it's there for a reason. It doesn't mean that nobody else can be there. They just want these extra uses. So I'm just saying, like, maybe... That was the reason, was to prevent that. And, I mean, all of that stuff to just basically change, a, you know, our, our zoning. And we said no all those times, the, BO, the BOC sent it back, and then they said no. And I just, you know, to just all of that work and all of our time just so they can come back and we can just change it and then just go ahead and do what you did, mm. what you wanted from the beginning. I just assumed that was the reason for the zoning is that it was to prevent something like that happening, which is a very dangerous slope because as that continues, in bef if we don't ever change it back so you need a conditional use map, that will just become a pattern. That could have been what they wanted the whole time. To me, there never was a real plan because he, I just think the goal was just to sell it to increase the property value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, now I don't have any zoning restrictions. I can sell whatever I want. I can't, no one can enforce this agreement with these homeowners who just all of a sudden switched, you know, because of this wall I'm promising them. 25 years here you sell it to somebody else and now you do whatever you, you just increase my property value and I have never had any plans here's a storage facility it took me 10 minutes to put on my map I mean you know for a site plan that you know Commissioner Lunt I mean I think you know uh, Mr. Kuskutis has brought this up before we need to reevaluate when the BOC doesn't agree with us and I think up until that point we had and we were very hesitant and I think when mm -hmm. it, we're hesitant about zoning changes you know, at least my thing is, like, if I'm hesitant or I'm reason, then we're advisory. Just <coughs> go on default. As I don't feel comfortable about this. No. Mm -hmm. Let the board make that mm -hmm. big decision. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they did. And I think Mr. Seaman did a really good job of explaining mm -hmm. our reasoning and putting it up to conditional use was dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because you basically said, oh, it's fine. You'll come back later. Well, then if we say no, they have, okay, well, whatever. I guess the, that agreement that you based your entire decision on is out the door. I, and, and the commissioner, one of the yeah. commissioners that actually made the motion said I was against this, but then I saw that you guys had an agreement. And that's just not enough to just have two private people in an agreement that we don't know. We only know what they want us to know. We have no idea about the rest of the agreement. Well, the whole agreement was provided. Well, either, but either way, it's yeah. not... It, but there's it, it, no way to enforce it. it. You know, it, it's a... You know, it's... <clears throat> so I, what I'm looking for is, I mean, you know, meeting, yeah. you know, from... From staff perspective, there's such, with the exception of the floor area ratio, there's not a vast amount of difference in these categories. And so to have four of them, that's, you know, we were looking to it's try vast to. vast enough for them to but, not be able to so do whatever to the they point, wanted, I mean, But yeah. if, but I have, like, again, I guess I'm looking for consensus. If you want to pull that ROR out of the mix here and we'll keep it as steady state, I'm just looking for direction. I have no, I don't have a dog in this fight at this point. <laughs> I'm just trying to see past if this was the case. I mean, you know, or they just wait. Just till <laughs> I mean, it just kind of made all of what we did pointless. Mm. Well, <laughs> we've been working on this for quite some time as Enough well. We had guys, always, you know, so it, it's a... It just stops people from coming in. And Moses Tucker uh, is a very... I mean, they, like, they're in, like, Arizona. and I mean, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Somebody made a comment about transportation. It might be a little crazy of a comment, but if you think about the location... Boy, they are. They you know, and, and those people... Yeah, moving right. You know, like, I think it's our job to protect them from themselves. Like, they don't know... Like, this agreement, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we're all happy and hunky-dory. Well, that could just go out the window. And they then they would be mad at us because we were like, well... You guys said you were happy with it, so we just took your word for it. And the city should not be operating on ha the happiness of two parties agreeing. So like, we, I'm going to speak for staff. We did not care about the agreement at all. We were basing our recommendation on the fact that you have a property that requires 
requires a residential Develop, as, as part of the development. No, I know you didn't. And do you that, have a Duke Energy. It's it, to this for, from our perspective. This was one property where it made absolute sense to us. No, and I know that, you did, but yeah. that's how at but the end of the day you know, it got changed, and that's what the commissioners were saying. That's how everyone changed their mind because they lost sight of why we <clears> even <throat> said no at the first time because they had five opportunities to ask us for the same thing. Nothing apps. Nothing changed except they were happy, and that should not have been what anyone. You guys didn't base your agreement on that, but no. that's what. The board, half of the board did. And the, yeah, and I, yeah, I can't <laughs> can't speak for that. So no, I, but I'm um, just saying. But now, like, if we went through all of that just to be like, oh, now we're just going to change it, so you can just have whatever you we we just basically speaking. stood up for our city, and what we made it, and then you're just like, oh, here you go. Speaking <laughs> of that, okay. When we're doing these zoning changes, do we at some point in time look at the permitted uses versus the conditional uses on some of these zoning changes? So That's, this is land use. This is not yeah. zoning. Okay. <laughs> so the land, but, and there are, you know, you, you do have generally, you have more generalized uses listed for your land use. But you, so, you know, if you don't have something in the, you know, in the realm and the land use that is allowed in the zoning, you've got an inconsistency of the issue and then you may just have to live with it. You know, it doesn't mean that every, you know, everything's going to be 100% lockstep. It just doesn't work that way. Well, I'm, I'm confused. If you've got, if, if this is a land use map. Yeah, zoning. Okay. If it's a land use map, okay, and we're uh, heavy industrial, land use is mm -hmm. industrial, okay, doesn't that mean that it's zoned for heavy industrial as well? Maybe. I mean, there it could be we, different zone. It could be different zoning within that district. It's only you, zoning when you put it in there, and then all of a sudden now zoning is part of it. Like it's all together. We can't keep separating land use and, and zoning. That's how they get in. It's they're, not separate. No, <laughs> but <laughs> legally they are. Yeah. Well, legally they yes. are, but they have implications that affect the other one, right? So yes. Okay. So outside you can't, like, of just forget about that it exists. You know, outside of Florida, Florida has some very specific. <laughs> You know, if I were practicing this in Virginia, you know, or where, or you know, generally land use maps are much more general, broad brush. They're like the place-based policy. They're all, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if if I could, if, yeah, it would really literally would be more like the place-based area map that we've included. That's a more normal I'll say land use map for when you get outside the, you know the state of Florida but and we're even more complicated because we have the countywide plan that we have to be consistent with as well well if that's the rule yeah. that we have to change it yeah, it's the exactly. I get that but so you know. but I mean we do not you know to the point of I just want you know I knew that based on the whole Moses Tucker you know application that this would be a discussion point and that's why you know that the biggest thing that's changing with the residential office retail, if it stays like it is, would be the FAR and the ISR increase. And if fundamentally, if y'all think that, whoa, let's put the brakes on that because we want we want that it's recognized as a transitional area, the whole US 19 quarter is, let's do a special area plan, let's do some planning before we do that. Might be entirely appropriate, might not, might need to be higher. We don't know. So keeping, I would rather keep something as status quo. Exactly. You know, yeah, so my, I'm yeah. fine with that, right. but I wasn't going to start changing it in midstream right now. I wanted to have this discussion with y'all. So, you know, I think what I'm hearing is please take ROR off the table and leave it like it is on the map. I, I, I would that agree that with what that. What they were yeah. saying wasn't that it was impossible. It was just impossible to do what they wanted to do. And you didn't make that Duke easement seem as big as it and and, like the, they made it, but you were just like, yeah, it's kind of in the way. But they made it seem like it was impossible. If I will be, I mean, if the Duke Energy easement, Duke Energy will have to approve whatever comes along. I, I have not personally put my eyes on something that said that they are preempted because of what's going to go in that, inter, in that easement from doing residential. But at this point, I'm kind of taking it at face value that it is. And if it is, then now they now they really can't do anything with the property, period, because they can't do 
a requirement that is part, they have to have a residential component under that residential office retail land use. I mean, I think it, I think it needs to change. I said that in, yeah. in the meeting, it needs to change, but I don't think it needs to give a higher floor area ratio. And I, yes, I yes. honestly think if they looked at their plan and they calculated it out, that they'd be pretty they damn close, pretty close to, to acceptable as it is so, because that easement takes such a big chunk out of the property. So what would be, and I think we've, the way that when I want to be, because I want to be transparent about this, the keeping the FAR in place and removing the mixed use requirement sounds much more palatable. Mm -hmm. okay, so take away the residential yeah. use, but don't okay. give them all those other Okay. extra things right like so and that's something that we you know we have that has taken place through these strike throughs and underlines is removing that mixed use piece in that ROR district so if you're comfortable with that then that achieves I think to me that was the bigger mm -hmm. that's a bigger issue so for the, me the, than the it is thing increased, was like a red yeah. herring the whole time was yeah. just to ask for more that they didn't they're need yeah. to say too, they? yeah that, that's yeah. all cleared yeah up. yeah they've cut they're already they've there. torn that, it all up yeah, already you know, yeah and they've been there the whole time yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we don't have an email oh we do have an email and it is <laughs> so I think you know if, if y'all just for clarity yeah. okay so so if we kept ROR yep. basically all the existing entitlements would be the same but then it would remove the requirement for mixed use, correct? It would That's remove the saying. requirement for mixed use, yeah. Yeah. So that would be actually what they specifically asked for. They were asking for more. I mean, they will. They were getting they present. They were getting. Yeah. They so, still yeah. won't. Be able to do they won't be able to do the storage. ROR does not allow for. Oh, so ROR does but, not allowed for the warehouse or the quasi-industrial. Uh, that's retail fair. or something. Well, I mean. Personally, I think storage is a great it, use it, 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 of piece of property because yeah, no it's because it, it has low traffic. Yeah, I mean we can for, we can that's easy <laughs> enough. I mean we can add storage as a as an allowable or like we can put warehouse slash storage as is a condition as a as a you something. know or as a a, a threshold so use or something. Yeah, yeah. set up is. Uh, with thresholds, so like so yeah. many acres could be occupied with that. So, but use. why is that? Why was it ever like? Is that because that category didn't ex exist where you had to put a mixed use for that housing? Like, if that was that simple and there was already another category, can, you know what I mean? No, I'm not following. That I'm sorry. Category already exists where you just take away the mixed use. It, no, it didn't. No, we, it don't, didn't. we don't have. For that small, it was like only 5%, right? Uh, I'm it? trying to think. I think very small, right? I think that so. question came up at the meeting about was another land use category considered? Yeah, I, and I, I don't asked think that. that there was another one that was appropriate to the corridor. The from that the one the, kind of got missed, yeah, the one that shares the the same floor area ratio is neighborhood residential, which really doesn't yeah, sound capture. right yeah. on US 19. Yeah, and but, that's in neighborhood residential. If I but I see, that's pretty what, limited. It, it just seemed very. Like, we, you know, after all of this, I like, finally got to the one yeah. point, but it got yeah. so confused. I think that was like the goal from the beginning. We almost just gave them whatever they wanted for just something. The that... other, yeah, the other way that we could approach it is we can do the name change. We like just like we're we're, we're going to have retail and services limited for what was neighborhood. We could do a retail and services. I don't know. We'll come up with a name that basically that recognizes the same uses, but it keeps this FAR and ISR down where it is today. Mm -hmm. And if that, I mean, I think that kind of captures, okay. They're still going to, you know, and to the point of if we do this and if they can make their project work, Moses Tucker make their project work, um, they're still going to have to get a conditional use to do the storage itself, that because that's required in the zoning, so it's storage so, when it yeah. comes to you. yeah, <laughs> well, but the storage the, is not a big deal, so yeah. no, yeah, so. I mean that's the that's going to be the lowest traffic of just it about is. anything it you is. could put there, so it's it's a good thing. All right, um, so okay, uh, is there any more else? Any more? Uh, Allie, you want to flip to the next one? Um, this is the last slide. Oh, this is the last um, slide. Okay, I think. Oh wait, yeah, this is the last one. Do we have do we have one of the maps loaded that shows us the affected areas? Yes, I can open that. So we had a few series of maps that show current proposed, and then we just showed the affected areas. So I think probably the affected area. This is just the current map. It's hard to see. Wait, I can't tell my mouse. 
I have a, a question. Yep. Okay. It's much a clarification because sometimes the colors are hard to pull through. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'm going to put my laser pointer up on the screen. Yeah. I drew it on this map in a hash. <laughs> I like to use hashes. <laughs> um, is it the fair ladder? to say it looks good up here in this light gray? Mm -hmm. Is that Down. all unincorporated county, top left? This right here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything in that gray, other than what's colored in a dark gray, a light gray, and reds? Let me go over here. Um, right here. This gray. Yep. So that's all unincorporated yes. county. And then this is all unincorporated county also. Yes. Okay. Okay, that was With the just exception of Eagle Creek, which is like... The little, the little dots. Okay, okay, so that's all unincorporated county. Now, I just wanted to do a comparison against the place-based area map. And in that place space, and you don't have to flip to that, <clears throat> but there's a big, about half of that upper gray unincorporated county is, is, is labeled in a, in a pretty red. rust, almost a chartreuse. Do you have the place space map? I think we do. As, as uh, <laughs> I know, I made it up, you actually got it. That's the hazardous as, way site. Is that what it is, the restricted? Restricted, that's the Stauffer chemical. Okay, yeah. okay, so I was just re reading yep. and it says, yep. so I guess I don't need a, Special area plan for the software site. It's got its, it's own. got a it's got a big restrictive covenant on it that basically says these are the very small set of uses that can go on there. I tell you what, it go perfect there. <laughs> solar farm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Solar farm. So that was it. I just needed to yeah. clarify that two zone, and then I'm gonna plant a tiny seed okay. without taking up anybody's more time. I like to refer to it as the south gateway, the off neglected zone of Tarpon Springs, which is county right now. Mm -hmm. And somehow we've painted ourselves into what almost is an enclave, mm. only it's a reverse <laughs> enclave. <laughs> Can you show uh, uh, on the map? Can you me the other map? So I stare at this and struggle. A, I have to travel through it a lot and just baffles me that our South Gateway, which is arguably just as important as our other gateways, is this mess it of- is. County. So this was the seed I wanted to plant, is that I think that this zone mm -hmm. almost warrants a minor special area plan to somehow rest it away in a consistent Possibly. and thorough manner so that it's not a haphazard. Because we can see this natural boundary line. It's completely mm -hmm. natural. And we've already got this, but yet we allow the county to approve wacky tobacco things along that corridor that are just kind of messy. And all I, I want to do is just point that out and go, hey, mm -hmm. and this, this would also tie back to annexations, is that it makes no planning sense to allow it to happen in a haphazard manner. Yeah. I have no solution. We we talked about, if you flip over to the place-based map. Yeah, we talked about extending. We talked about, so the same way that we've got that transitional on US-19, we talked about putting a, a transitional area on that south gateway area. It, again, to emphasize that it, we need some sort of a special planning effort there, but for some reason we didn't do it. Well, we went back and forth. There's still and back an opportunity. You just painted there is. green right there. There just, absolutely is. Go back over to that. I can do it in hash mark. I did it in hash <laughs> mark right here. I think that's that which, property. Which one? I, units. So this, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm looking at this yeah. right. Like, so blue is SPC. Is that my? The blue is St. Pete College. Okay, so yes. then over here, where that's all in, unincorporated by around the intersection of, where the trail and mm -hmm. uh -huh. with the exception of yeah. the what, little yeah. Little and so what? It's a safety is thing. That the 7 or is that the seven eleven? Is because the county like the turns a blind eye what's going it's on a, there. It's a place. The property it's owners have paved place. edge to edge of their property. Oh, it's awful. It's horrid what's happened there. It used to be, you know, now that because the auto lots keep hopping around and so they've paved everything, no permit, mm -hmm. ruin our storm water, and then they're just moving around like, yeah, yep, yeah. okay, you see it, I see we, it. We we do, um, and so I I would not have any issues with you know, putting you know that making that that corridor transitional as well, I, I, you know, and to call attention to it. We went back and forth over. On this plate, on the place-based area map, of try, do we go ahead and call that out? Do we not? Well, so objects. I would like to to have a little special attention. Okay. Well, that's I, we, we just talked mm -hmm. about as traffic comes like, up, yes. a yeah. sign, yeah. and then, then yeah. just to exert a tiny bit of control. But right now we have no control over. Yeah. Happens. And I and and I think you know I'm 
99% sure that Pinellas County would be more than willing to do a, you know, a joint plan. We've talked about the same thing with the north side of the river. They recognize that, you know, they would be amenable to joint planning area, you know, a joint planning process so that, you know, we look at things cohesively. Um, I, I feel certain they would. It's like everything else, you know, time and workload. <laughs> They did, yeah. I don't either. What, what, what was it called? It was called the Cultural Corridor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The historic all 19 corridor through Tarpon, Palm Harbor, Dunham, mm -hmm. and, and it was going to kind of, you know, I kind of liked it, but they. Nothing really happened out of it. The drop doors just on hold. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't know that those areas weren't so incorporated. The yeah, it's a, it's a real hodgepodge. And we, we get. You know, we'll get piecemeal annexation applications like somebody wants to redevelop. They need in the, you know, the, now they need to like hook up to our, it's amazing amount of that stuff is on septic down there. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So it, we provide, we can provide sewer service. So we have, we force them to at least process an annexation. On the other side too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting one. So. And even though it's kind of the same thing over even on US 19 at Klosterman, we've got, we've got, yeah, we got the car wash and we got the St. Pete College property, but on the other side, it's still unincorporated. So. Is that the mobile home park? Is that incorporated? I, I'm not sure what that is. Is that a mobile home park over there on Lake Tarpon? Well, what's, there? what's this part right oh, oh, I see what you're saying on the, on the, on the, right on the east side. Yeah. I think that's, that's Oak Leaf that Village. It's Oak Leaf Village? Yeah, I think oh. so. Or Eagle Creek's over there. Eagle Creek's over there. Eagle, there. No, it is in here. That's Eagle no, Creek. Eagle, Eagle Creek, we, we did. We, yeah. Yeah. This is the mobile home park, I think, right here. Isn't yeah, it's up, it's up for there. And then there's yeah. like a shopping center. So Oak Leaf isn't, is unincorporated? No, that's ours. Oak oh, the, oh, the yellow is ours. Right, so what's that little, that right, right there? Yeah, right there under the yellow. I, I can't. I can't tell the scale. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it's just, you can see it's cut out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's, there's a, uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so it's. The wetland, that's that wetland. I think it's just some, I think it's just an unincorporated in. property. It looks like it's one big parcel that well, maybe has a house. Is that where, like, you take that I shortcut? Think, did we incorporate that? No, this still. That sub, that, that, that small little subdivision, that's the. No, the that's, thing. that's a. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. That's what they Let's go back to my zone. That's a big one, though. Big rectangle. Yeah. It looks like from the, I just have to Google Maps. It looks like it's just a single family house. house. I'm going to look at the property appraiser and see what it's like. Oh, I guess it just looks bigger on this. It's a, it's a big piece of property, but it's like one, it looks like one structure is on it. Mm. Okay. It might just be a house. Or yeah, these are, this, this we need to address. Yeah, I'm going to put it here. That, that. Yeah, because we can't. And that's not, that's, not, that's, that's not incorporated? incorporated. No, nope. it's, 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 it's a single family home. Behind the golf course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, 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 that's not behind. Well, that? well, yeah, but it's across the street. That's, um. Cruden Place Road. I think that's yeah, roll. Yeah. Is that rolling? Yeah, no. no. That's behind Trap Road. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little neighborhood. That's that's a nice little neighborhood. Yeah. Really yeah, this is just a single family home. That is weird that that's all completely surrounded, though. Yeah. Could, I guess you could require them to be annexed if it's an enclave. No, it's not an enclave. Yes. Oh, that <clears throat> that might qualify as an enclave. The problem is, though, you can't, even though it's an enclave, I mean, it's difficult to force annexation of an entire subdivision. <laughs> it kind of has to be a, it's a referendum. referendum. Yeah. It's by referendum. Yeah, but, are, but doesn't our police service that? No. Really? Fire department does, but police does not. Now they have they have first responder agreements, but it, it's in our fire district. But it's in sheriffs, just, just like the north side of the river. A lot of it's unincorporated. And <laughs> That's, right. That's awkward. When you live there, you think you're in Tarpon. Yeah. You call nine one one and yeah. send the police. That'll be the sheriff. Send the sheriff. Cops are stopped outside the neighborhood. <laughs> not that. So if I make that right on red over there on alternate 19, right. the Tarpon police has no jurisdiction to give me a ticket. 
That's sheriff's property. Bright on red. Oh, and the by the turn. Right here. There's a no light. Oh, no oh, right on red. Right turn. Yeah. Not a safe. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, don't. Yeah, we'll 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 <laughs> all right. I so, just had all right. No idea that that wasn't so, incorporated. Learning things here. I feel like y'all's attention span yeah. is pretty much done. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> learning new it's, I got it's everybody doing after, get the after math. so many hours. <laughs> it like, oh, no, that's okay. No, I feel like we made good progress. Can and I just so, ask yeah. a question? Yes. So, I feel like I'm talking to Mike. So, for the future land use categories, aside from the ROR changes that we discussed, was everything else make sense to you guys and you feel comfortable with it or? It, could you maybe just kind of go through because I just learning what I did like I would have no if I had known all this like going into that other meeting I think we could have like if we'd have just offered them that from the beginning it would have well we don't have a we don't have a category for that right now but by making these minor changes to R O R that it would be possible we'll just kind of go through each one and just to well, just really real, kind of quickly like what's the major differences between each with the map oh, oh okay. it's an ideal suit situation timing wise because mm -hmm. because what I really wanted to do was approve their proposal right. with the floor area ratio yeah. staying, the same, staying the same and there was no way to do it so I now we would, can I fix do would, that. I would like to get some on the FAR because there's two FARs in the ROR right now so if it's a retail project it's 0 0.20 if it's an office project it's 0 0.3 so I need to I need some guidance on. I, I would recommend the point three, as the the ROR point three, and with the additional, you mm -hmm. know, we're removing the residential because we're removing anyway. It, yeah, so, we're removing yeah. the residential. So, um, I just because since there was two and they, I just wanted to get your concurrence on. Let's just go with point three, or if you want to split the baby and go point two five, I'm fine with that too. Mm -hmm. so, I, so, I think like, on the like the west. Side, I know we had kind of talked about that. That's all saying nothing's changing on. That's like the. So, so what this map is showing. So everything that's colored in, basically anything white or gray is not affected. But any okay. of the properties that are colored are the ones that are affected by these changes, whether it's mm -hmm. a name change or the combining the categories. So, so this go? is the current, <clears throat> and then this is proposed colors, and then with acknowledgement that ROR is primarily this <clears throat> prop these properties up here, so that would obviously go away. The, what are the, the biggest changes? Um, I just want to just really. The, I think the our, the retail and services cap. Yeah. The combination of I think probably the best way to look at it is on that PowerPoint. I think it's so from what what's the original color that on the okay. this map and then to what and then to that like maroon. Okay. So well, we were not consistent with our color schemes. Did <laughs> 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 <Folks did> this? <laughs> yeah. This is okay. So. So residential office, like the red, like that is the original. This and then orangey color is the retail office. Wait, residential, residential office, office retail. retail. Okay. Mixed use category. This orange color. Um, I believe this kind of brighter orange is residential. Is it office general? Um. Yeah. I I, really yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then these dark kind of purple colors are, are commercial, commercial general. general. So. Yeah. Basically, the biggest, I'd say the biggest change is probably along US 19 is they're going to go in more consistent categories. Mm -hmm. yeah, offering services. more ser more categories? Is it, is it widening the it, but, not, yeah. uses? No, um, if I go back to the table. I'm trying to find those colors here so I can see, like, so the maroon. What we can do before the next meeting is we can just do a map of just the retail and services and commercial general stuff so that maybe it, it might cut some of the clutter out for you. Um, so, like, there's transportation utility in this maroon. Yeah. And it's not in the Word, That's just a name change. No. It, it's, a, it's a name change. Okay. So it goes to public, uh, semi-public, um, and it's being combined. So transportation mm -hmm. utility and... Public institutional? Public. Yeah. Or, or or institutional. And, and institutional yeah. are being combined. Are yeah. being, yeah. Those will all be public, semi-public. I think and we can. I, it was, I think the presentation may have been sent to you guys, but if not, we can send it to you because I think that these two slides that we have most clearly say what's changed. So it says whether it's just changing the names, but everything for the most part stays the same. 
or if something changed and maybe a density got adjusted or um, uses or whatnot, I think that gives you a good overview. And then so it helps you when you look through the strike through underline at the different text. Yeah, it's confusing. So because like, the you, transient word is gone, which I guess that mm -hmm. yeah, terrible. Yeah, we, we just, instead of transient accommodations, we called it lodging. So a lot of that was just like. <laughs> the word transient. Has transient is <laughs> yeah, <yeah>. different. <laughs> yeah. So and the other thing I would call attention to in the, you know, in the big strike through underline version of the, of the, of the uh, categories, we did we did w did a fair amount of wordsmithing on the purpose statements for our categories, and so we were trying to make them and, and we were trying to make the that work better with the place-based area map and what we were trying to achieve with that. So, and you'll also see in that table we have a column that says the relationship to the place-based area map. So, a residential very low, you know, that really is you know, appropriate in the areas on that place-based map that are agricultural and residential estate. So we're, we're trying to put some guidance in this that when someone does come in the future and they want to change the land use map, you know, we can say, well, you know, the intent based on the place-based area map wouldn't support that, you know, so well, that's, that's good, yeah. yeah, that's what we're trying to yeah. do. Are there any, um, is there anything between alter, an alternate 19 between Dota Canese and the, and, um, Orange or Tarpon Avenue, just any big mm -hmm. changes? That's all in the special area yeah, plan. It's <laughs> yeah. just, that's, so that's the. That's like special the, area plan, and that's just changing it. It's changing the name. Community Redevelopment District just to Activity Center. To Activity it's Center. Insane. But the that's special the area plan, plan, everything stays Nothing in place. Nothing's really changing there. No. Nothing. Okay. No, not until we Could, go through a special planning process to update it. Yeah. Okay. Could we get, and this is if, if there are some, but in, in instances where there are density changes caused by the changes, could we get next time just a very there, brief table that uh, that there breaks aren't those any. or summarizes those if there are any? Yeah, I'll look. I'll look through it again. I don't believe I'd, there are any aside from we were <clears throat> they're just, just the page two about halfway down, half right? down where okay. it went from point three to point four. That's four area <coughs> That's ratio. Four area ratio. But me. residential densities we were very careful about, and I don't think I there's don't a change to residential mm -hmm. density anywhere in these changes. So. I'll look because we that was the whole, whole point of like no. based well, on the analysis I'd, I'd like and future population need we don't need to check we don't need to touch our residential densities right, so yeah, so what i noted here these were, are the only changes so the original you guys can't and that's the one we just talked yeah. about so this yeah. yeah these would have been changes if you guys wanted to combine ror with all these categories into retail services these were the effects this was the most effective category mm -hmm. that kind of goes away and we talked about just yeah so we'll have a, we'll have well we're gonna have we're gonna change it to retail and services yeah. pick up the uses but we're gonna put Some sort it'll of be a retail and services limited or something i don't know we'll come <coughs> up with something and we'll push back the on the far and stuff to what it is today yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the only one i have noted here was cg um the lodging density. Lodging from 30 to 40 units um, and for hotels, and that's the that's our highest commercial designation. Um, so, and we took resort facilities high from 50 to 30. Right. So why did we go up in commercial general? Because I think that's what the that was the higher limit of. I think in ROR it was. Oh, commercial recreation. I think had the highest. There, there was one one of those. Of the commercial limited recreation, one of them had a higher, it was very inconsistent. It had a higher, like, 40 unit per acre, so we went with the highest on the 40 units per acre for hotel density. Um, Are retail and services always together? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it is on the countywide plan, but. It's just interesting, the word commercial is just <clears throat> being like. <laughs> well, it, it's and now it's retail and services, and now so it, you know, and it, it is. It's interesting because it's like you know we we kind of wrestle with that with the special area plan because in the smart code, there's there's no language in in like when you look at the use tables and everything, it really focuses on things like like personal services, like hair salons. Mm -hmm. It all kind of gets lumped into retail. Commercial. Commercial has a, it's just, the yeah. of, it just has a bad, oh, it's commercial. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's a, you know, it's in your mind. I mean, retail, oh, retail services, services is, I want to help small businesses. It's just a, <laughs> it's a catch-all kind of, you know, of, 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 you know. Slow and steady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and maybe nobody else is, is concerned about this, but it, it just strikes me as odd 
to, to reduce the density of, for lodging in high density resort and, and increase it in commercial. I, 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 uh, let's see, so a resort facility is medium from 50 down to 30. It just seems inconsistent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, to look me. and see. What, medium allowed for 30 units and high allowed for 50. So I think we, so split, we, went, with we more went with 40. Restrictive one. Oh, we went with the more restrictive. I don't think we have any RFH properties. We don't, yeah, we don't have it. It's a category that's not used. We don't have any resort facilities high. But I think that's why, I think we have some medium, but I guess why when it was combined, we went a little lower. Um, but I, I <clears> maybe, maybe, maybe 40 is the, just the citywide, unless you do the alternative density, give us a development agreement process. Yeah, I mean, why don't yeah, why don't we be why don't we be consistent with with one or the other? I don't really care which. Yeah, I like forty. It it thirty is really hard to make a hotel project. I mean, because you still have FAR limitations. You're going to have height and things like that. Why are you giving anybody some Sorry. false hope, Renee? Why? <laughs> <laughs> don't lead them on. I mean, just yeah. tell them. <laughs> We do still need lodging in the city, so no. I mean, I think forty is a good, a good. Uh, I mean, and it's like if somebody wants more, they can go through a development agreement process and ask for it. So, then it can work for it. All right, yeah, that's fine for me. All right, it's eight thirty. Or is our shall we? <laughs> I think I think we landed at three. point three, three. Yeah. Three, yeah. We'll go with point three. We'll call it retail and services limited or retail and services something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's clarify language. Yeah. Adding yeah. adding words is clarified. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well at least at least all the uses will be consistent. Away. The only thing that'll yeah. be different is the the, I'm just kidding. the limitations on I feel the FAR. I this was good tonight, folks. It was good, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so at the next meeting, we'll be ready to jump off to... Yeah, I think we are done with neutral. The bridge? We'll be, <laughs> we'll be ready to jump off to um, some additional elements. So we'll pick Should up with... We do the housing ones? Housing, housing the, um, transportation. With your packet. <laughs> oh, okay. so yeah, yeah. We got rec open space. We got historic preservation. We got all kinds of things. So. Many the wrappers are sugar. Yeah, they're <laughs> really just the goals and objectives. Well, I will tell you, to you. I know good meeting. That you're sneaking. You're the, you're the candy man. Good meeting. Are we adjourned? We're, we're adjourned. <clears throat> they, they've taken my gavel away. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't let me um, have it at the last meeting either. Well, I learned that um, <coughs> I saw at the last meeting how Costa gave the gavel away. I didn't know why he did that. I guess you can't second a motion right. with the right. gavel. Yeah. I thought, right. well, that's an, an opportune time to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> So do we need a...